Dr. Trondan's UFO report. A weekly update on extraterrestrial activity. Finally, the truth can be told. Dr. Trondan's UFO report. A weekly program from Watertown, Wisconsin. Center of UFO activity in the upper Mississippi watershed. The opinions and facts expressed on this program are those of the program's producers and do not reflect the views of this station. All lawsuits pending against Dr. Trondant are frivolous and the work of those in the employ of alien taskmasters seeking the overthrow of human governments and the establishment of Earth as a slave planet. Welcome to this week's program. We're still on the air. Finally, the truth can be told. Right now, we're working on Trondant t-shirts with a picture of the dead centurion found in the Horicon Marsh, which will be available for a small donation. As I promised last week, we have actual alien artifacts on the show with us tonight. Unfortunately, we don't understand how it works. The extraterrestrial architects are so far beyond us. <sighs> Maybe you could help. First, we've received another troubling letter from a concerned viewer. Mr. Michael Frost of Watertown, Wisconsin writes, Trondant. We're all concerned about drugs, crime, the destruction of the environment. Let me assure you that I have on authority that the saucers are going to land again. And when they do, they will solve our insignificant problems. Put me on your program. I have proof. Proof, factual evidence. I guarantee it. We can discuss the timetable of their arrival. He enclosed some pictures. I can't let this guy on the show. His research is far too primitive. Uh, saucers are coming again? They've always been with us. They never stopped coming. They're with us now. Mm -hmm. And about their intentions? Which group are you describing? There are several galactic species. Not just one. Mr. Frost, get your facts straight, and then we'll talk. Do your homework. Everybody wants to get on TV. Look at these drawings based on local indigenous designs. Some look familiar, sure. <laughs> but we're not dealing with just one group of aliens here. <laughs> these are the wrong pictures. My wife is a cattle mutilation expert. Now the photograph of where we found the motor. Probably an alien junkyard. I call this motor. Actually, it's just a fragment, probably a piece of an anti-gravity device that exploded. We have reports of another piece, dug up by a farmer in Ashipin during World War I. These artifacts are probably scattered all over. If you have one or know of one, please call, write, let us know. The early white settlers destroyed what they called a blasphemous red man's ritual involving this very device. How long it had been venerated by that culture, nobody knows. However, early French missionaries mentioned the cult, having heard about it downstream. It's easy to imagine the curiosity and fear of the Winnebago Indians living on the Rock River near the area which is now Rockford, Illinois and they found alien bodies and even pets floating in the water. The French thought the ceremonies had something to do with angels. Here's another letter from our mailbag. Dear Dr. Trondant, we like your show very much. I watch it every week. My friends and I have named our band Dr. Bob and the Aliens. Enclosed is a cassette of our music. I hope you like it, and we'd be honored if you'd play it on your show. Thank you very much, Merle Mitchell, Forest Park, Illinois. Well, thank you, Merle, and we'd be happy to play the cassette on our show. You'll be interested in this. My research has revealed this. 
In the 1840s, the first Anglo settlers in the area exploring a creek which empties into the Rock River near the present day location of the Watertown Country Club stumbled upon an ancient grotto decorated with mud paintings and obscene statuary. They immediately destroyed the shrine and the surrounding grove of trees with axes and other farm implements. It was my Christian duty, said Leroy Johnson. Such things are not meant to be seen or talked about. He remained silent on the matter until his death. Was he a UFO contactee? Is that why he couldn't talk? Some form of hypnosis that blocked him from discussing these matters? These and other questions will be taken up on a future installment of our program. Also, in response to viewers' requests, on future shows, we'll be dealing with alien archaeology, specifically the massive glass structures we've been hearing so much about. We're all in this together. This is important work that may be crucial to future generations on Earth. On another upcoming show, we will deal with the subject of autopsies on alien bodies. I'd like to take a few minutes to respond to criticism from a few nutcases out there. Here's a letter. Specifically from J.S. Johnson's Creek. Dear Dr. Bob, it's generally agreed that the pyramid mounds at Astalin, Wisconsin were constructed and have been used as landing pads for alien spacecraft for at least 10,000 years. Well, you're partly right, J.F. <laughs> Remember those pictures of charred buffalo bones we showed you? Buffalo bones containing radioactive cesium? What's the idea of claiming Watertown, Wisconsin is an optional landing site? It's well known that extraterrestrial visitors never construct more than one launch pad in a 500-mile radius. Watertown is less than 20 miles from Mastelin. Get your facts straight, Trondant. Well, get your facts straight, J.S., and I'll come right out and call you Jack Sweeney. I'm familiar with your theories, and I'm surprised that you would hang on to your old debunked notions. Mr. Sweeney, the information you have is incorrect. Therefore, your conclusions are counterfeit, bogus. First, let me state with authority that the landing site at Astalan is new, less than 500 years old. Watertown has been the center of extraterrestrial colonization in the upper Mississippi watershed since the last glacier, or before. Recently, approximately 1249 AD, this area was touched by an intergalactic war. Of course, the major damage can be seen in the Lebanon, Wisconsin area where long, trough-like marshes were scoured out of the earth by unknown technologies. It was a galactic war, perhaps a civil war. The Indian legends tell of it, hinting at more than one species involved in the conflict. And of course, the record is in the genetic code of those born in Watertown. From mosquito larvae to dairy cattle to human beings, there are genetic tags, odd spurs on the chromosomes, probably holding genetic information that our bodies haven't yet learned how to read. Fantastic. This is the legacy of the shocking outpouring of alien technological power that saturated the soils and waters of our fair region, permeating all life with a taint of extraterrestrial influence. Small wonder Watertown has become a center of UFO research. It's in the blood. <laughs> Next week, we have a controversial program in store for you. We'll speak with our most famous local UFO contactee, Mr. Daniel Moore, codenamed Ian Buckets, about the diabolical experiments performed on him by his alien abductors. I'm not prepared to discuss the sexual nature of those experiments at this time. Then, see the papers I'm holding in my hands? This is the proof we've been waiting for. It names names and dates and places. I have x-rays obtained from a Washington, D.C. surgeon that will shock and amaze you to know that our government has been influenced all along. I have in my hands a list of the elected officials of the United States government, including numerous recently elected members of Congress who have economic ties and in some cases even genetic ties with the aliens. Next week on our show, I'm prepared to name names with irrefutable proof. Please tune in. We've been able to stay on the air so far with your support. <laughs>